Good morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever and whenever you are. My name is Benjamin, and welcome to our 2D Hack and Slash course. This is a pay what you want course. There are two links in the description, one to my itch.io page where you could donate, or another that is my pixel art course on Udemy. And so if you want to support this course, you can click those links and send me some support. Let's get started. So we're going to be one of the issues that we have right now with our system, uh, we're going to do a little bit of refactoring, I should say. Uh, one of the issues we have right now is our um, our input right here is coupled to our state. It's coupled to our our object. Basically, if we want to change the way we get input, uh, we have to go through and change it in every single one of these states that we have and change all of these. It's a lot of stuff to change, a lot of code that would need to be redone. So we're going to create an object that will handle input for us. So uh, it will be its own thing. All the input will be handled inside of that object. And then we'll give our skeleton object access to that input object. So let's do this. Let's come in and we're going to create a new object. Do create object and we'll call this O underscore input. Okay. Now we will, we're going to add an event here. So we'll add an event and we'll add a create event. And inside of this event, we're going to get our input and we're going to store our input inside of variables. So we'll have one here called uh, write. We'll have a variable called write and we'll do keyboard check or keyboard check VK write. And we'll do left keyboard check VK left. Okay, and then what did we had? What did we have? We have two others here, which are for uh, rolling and attacking. So we'll add another one here. We'll call this roll keyboard check VK. What do you do? Space for this one and attack keyboard check VK L control. Okay. So we've saved all of this inside of our input object. However, we're only updating this input on the very on the create event. So we want to update this input every single frame. So uh, we could copy and paste it into a step event. However, the problem with doing that is uh, we'll have duplicate code, right? So let's create a new script here and we'll call it get input. And in this new script, oh, we've got kind of stuff in the way here. Let's get rid of that. In this new script, there we go. We can just copy this in. We'll just copy it, control C, and then paste it over here, control V. And then we'll just call get input. We'll call the script inside of here. Then we can come into our step event and we can also call get input like that. There we go. Okay, so we've made our input object. Now we need to give our skeleton object access to this input object. Now this creates a dependency, so it creates some coupling. Um, there's no way you can, obviously your objects in your game have to interact with each other, so they have to be, there has to be some coupling. But we can do this, uh, oops. Um, you can decide how you want to do this to some extent, uh, whether or not you want a single input object that's global scope, uh, and you would call that a singleton and then all the different aspects of your game that needed to get input would have access to that input object. So that's one way of doing it. 
But for our situation, we don't really need to do that because the only time that we're ever getting input is when we're battling. So the only character that ever receives input is this skeleton. Uh, so because of that, we're just going to do it inside of our create event right here for our skeleton. We'll create a new variable and I'm just going to call this one input and we'll set it equal to instance create layer. Well, okay. So this will be a little bit different depending, this is a good thing to mention. This will be a little bit different depending on whether you're using GameMaker Studio 1.4 or GameMaker Studio 2. So in GameMaker Studio 1.4, you'll just do instance create and then you can do zero, zero, object, or O underscore input like this, okay? And zero, zero is gonna be where you're creating this object. Obviously our input object doesn't have a sprite, so it doesn't really matter where you create it because it's not visible, um, but just creating it at zero, zero seems to make sense. However, if you're in GameMaker Studio 2, you're going to have to use either instance create layer or instance create depth. And I would recommend instance create layer uh, because you're generally gonna want to create them on different layers. So if we click on our room here, you can see we have two layers. We have, where did my room go? What the heck? Holy cow, we were way off in who knows where land. Um, I just clicked on my, double clicked on my skeleton to bring me back to my room. That was weird. Anyway, so we have two layers here. There's instances and background. So when we're creating, when we're creating this, we have to create it on a layer. And obviously we're creating an instance here, so it's gonna have to be our instances layer. So we'll do X position zero, Y position zero, layer ID or name, instances, and then the object we want to create is O underscore input, like that. So we're creating our input object, and then we're assigning it to this variable called input. Now that we have access to our input object, we can access the variables that we created inside of it. So uh, when we do get input like this, it creates these variables, right, left, roll, and attack. So now we have access to those, okay? Now it's good, you might even put a comment right here and just call this dependencies, dependencies, if that's how you spell it. Depend, dependent, yeah, yeah, dependencies. I'm just thinking in, in, uh, so I speak Portuguese. <laughs> this is a little bit funny to mention. It just, I speak Portuguese, and so sometimes I use Portuguese to try and help me with spelling um, because the vowels are often the same. In English, we tend to just say uh for everything, like direction, direction. It's like everything is kind of like uh for vowels, so it makes it harder to spell. But in Portuguese, obviously, it's a it's a phonetical language, so you you say it the same way that you read it. Okay, so we've got that set up. So we've got our input object dependency. Now, when we come into here, instead of doing keyboard check right, we can just type input dot right, and so this gets access to our input object, and then the dot operator right here accesses the variable inside of that object called right. So we can get access to it. Then here we can do if input dot left, and then uh, right here, if not input dot right, and not input dot left. And then this one will be if input dot roll. And this one will be input dot attack like this. So now our, our 
move state is set up correctly. Let's check our other states. So roll doesn't get any input, but this one does. So we want to do input.attack right here. And then right here, we're going to do input.attack. And then right here, as oh, we don't need one on the last one. So we'll save the game and press play. So the game should play exactly the way it did before. We've just moved our input outside of the skeleton object and into its own input object. And then we gave the skeleton object access to that input object. But now if we decide to change our input, we only need to change it inside of the input object. And the skeleton, it still accesses the variables the same way. Um, but we can change the how the input works inside of the input object. So basically, instead of if we want to change the button for attack, instead of changing it in one, two, three places, we just come into here and change it right here. We just change it in one place. Let's run the game and test it. And we can roll. We can attack. Now, there's an issue here, which is uh, you can hold the attack button, which depending on the kind of game you make, maybe you want a turbo mode where they can just hold the button and it'll continue to work, you know. Uh, so that's kind of up to you. However, I don't want it to do that. I want to make them, I want to make the player so they have to get the timing right for combos. So instead of doing keyboard check, we'll just do keyboard check pressed. And see, like I said, we only need to change this in one location now instead of in three or four locations. Now, while we're on the subject of input, a lot of you guys are going to want to set up, uh, set up a way to play the game using the ASDW keys. So let me show you how to do that. Keyboard map, let's see, keyboard key. If I can remember the function. <laughs> Here, this is a good time to use the help file. So I can't think of the function off the top of my head. Um, so we're gonna search and we're gonna do map. And uh, because I'm looking for keyboard mapping. So this is tile map stuff, not what I want. Uh, but if we come down, still not seeing what I want here. So maybe I'll search input. So let's just search input, input. No, let's check, let's check keyboard. Keyboard, there we go. Keyboard get map. Okay, that sounds closer to what we want. And we've got keyboard set map, here we go. Keyboard set map, key one is the key that, is the key that key one is mapped to. This key is the key that key one is mapped to. This is the key that is to be mapped. That is really confusing. But look, they have an example for us. So let's say we have the above example will map the A key to the left arrow key. That means if the, play, the player can use either A or the left arrow key and all the code that is written for the left arrow key will also respond to the A key used instead. So we're mapping the A key to the left arrow key. Okay, let's come back to here and then we'll just do, what was the function again? Keyboard set map. So we'll do keyboard set map. And now what key do we want to map? We want to map the A key. So Let's look at our help file here. We've got ORD, parentheses, double quotes, A, parentheses. Okay. And the A is capital. That's important. 
So ord parentheses double quote a parentheses and we're going to map this to vk left, right? Because a is to the left. And then we'll do the same thing. Keyboard set map ord. Then we'll do s. Wait, no, d. vk right. Keyboard. Oh my goodness. <laughs> set map ord. And then I'm going to do the J key for, um, let's see, this is for attacking. What's, which one's attack? L control, VK, L control. Map, ord, and then the K key for rolling, I think, VK space okay now now this um, code right here is inside of our git input but we don't actually need it here so I'm going to do control x come into our input and just come into the create event and paste it here the reason we don't need to do it the reason we don't need well actually let's do it before we get the input We'll do it right up at the very top and then get the input. Um, we don't need to get, we don't need to map this every single frame. You just map it in the create event and then it's mapped for the rest of the game. So we should be able to use our ASDW keys now and J and K. Yep. Cool. So that's how you can do keyboard mapping. Really simple not very complicated and the help file you know gives you shows you pretty much exactly how to do it okay that's going to be all for this lesson thank you guys so much for watching it and i will see you all in the next one